Here's a brain teaser question which we can use to see if we understand how to do multi-circuit loops. Let's imagine we have two batteries, each pointing in the same direction. They're both 12 volts, and they're connected in series to a pair of light bulbs. So as it stands right now, both light bulbs are illuminated, and they're both receiving uh, the same current because they're in series. Let's imagine, though, that we're about to close a switch located right here at the middle of the circuit. This switch is going to create a short between that light bulb and the junction between the two batteries. As a result of closing the switch, we could ask what will happen. Will it be the case that both light bulbs go out? Will A dim? Will B dim? Will A brighten? Will B brighten? Or will nothing change? Well, before the switch, we can draw a loop all the way around this perimeter of the circuit and do Kirchhoff's second law. We can say, well, I have 12 volts in plus another 12 volts in minus a voltage drop through that first light bulb, IR and uh, minus another voltage drop through the second light bulb, uh, light bulb B, uh, also equal to IR because it's the same current and we're assuming they're identical light bulbs. So the current passing through these uh, light bulbs is 12 volts over R, whatever R is. After the switch is closed though, uh, I don't know if the current passing through A and B are the same. So I'm going to write down the same loop and say, well, I have 12 volts plus 12 volts minus IA times R minus IB times R. But I could also draw a loop right around the top uh, square up here. So that one that would go through the switch, through the battery, and light bulb A. And as a result, I'd have 12 minus IA times R. As a result, I would realize that IA it's just going to equal my old value of 12 volts over R. It hasn't changed. This would give me the same thing for B if I were to do the same thing there. And at the junction, if I had to write down a junction equation, there might be some current passing through the switch, but if both current A and current B are 12 volts over R, as they were before, then this, this current through the switch has to be zero. So this suggests that nothing changes, which is kind of surprising. But what I have to realize is that the switch is not actually across any potential difference. It does create a short, but because there's no potential difference between this point in the switch and this point in the switch, there's no fl current flow. Think about it this way. If this is 0 right here in the corner, and this is 12 volts, and this is 24, in the old days, before we close the switch, this would drop me back down to 12 volts, and this would drop me back down to zero again after I go through light bulb B. So this point in the switch, the right-hand side, and this point in the switch, the left-hand side, were both at a potential of 12 volts. When there's no potential difference, there's no potential drop, there's going to be no current flow through that wire. So actually, in the end, it's not that surprising that nothing changes. But if that's still confusing, let's actually see it play out. This is a simulation from the University of Colorado Physics Education Group that does the, exactly the, the same thing that I just described. So we have a little circuit builder that they provided us, and we can connect two batteries and two light bulbs in series and put a switch across it. Right now, the switch is open, and because it's open, there's an infinite resistance right here, and both, battery, uh, both light bulbs seem to be glowing. I'm going to close the switch, though, and see what happens. Well, notice the current flow continues to go around the, out, the outer perimeter, and nothing happens in the middle. It's for the reason I just said, that really there's no potential drop from this point to this point in the circuit, therefore there's no current flow through here. If you want another way of thinking about it, you could imagine that the upper square has a current flow around it that's going counterclockwise. And therefore, as it's trying to shove current through the switch, that current would be going from left to right. You could also think of the lower loop as having a counterclockwise current through the battery, through the light bulb, back through the switch, and then back to the battery. And that would be trying to shove current right to left through that part of the switch. And so the left to right current from the upper loop is exactly canceling the right to left current from the lower loop. And as a result, the net current through the switch is zero. And you can see that directly in the simulation because no, none of the little blue dots representing charges are moving through the switch.